most of us have probably seen the movie War Room, and it's all about having this prayer closet that you go into and you're praying and you have scripture on the wall and you're coming to God with everything, with your prayers for others and your prayers for yourself, and you're just laying it all before God's feet. And it's such a powerful thing. And many of us don't have space in our homes, so we've created notebooks and binders, and we put all of these things into it. But the one thing I was noticing is that I had so many Bible verses in it, and I just started to feel like I want this in a Bible. And so this has been the process of making that. And so I'm starting a series of videos on how I've done this. I don't want to just say these are the various parts of this Bible. I want to give you the verses that I've found so far to line up with the different sections. And I know that if I put all of these Bible verses into one video, it would end up being a few hours long. And I know for myself, I tend to like a video that's about 15 minutes long. And so I'm just going to break it up into sections. And so because of that, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the notification bell. And so then you won't miss when the new videos come out. And today I want to start with a part that for me really turns this into a war binder. And that is connected with these three columns of tabs that are right here on the end. And then I'm going to show you how they connect with these tabs at the top of my Bible and how these can work together to deepen your prayers and to make this become a war room like I have never experienced before. And of course, you always have the option to have a war binder that's a notebook and then a Bible that you're working together with. So I'm definitely not saying you have to do this or that that way doesn't work as well. But I just personally have loved having it all connected. And so I just wanted to show this idea in case you're interested in it. And what I did is I decided on the typical prayer requests that we get. So finances, family, miscellaneous desires and needs, work or school, direction in life, home, protection, someone to return to the faith, health, unspoken prayer requests. So maybe somebody has something they're dealing with, but they don't want to tell you specifically what it is. Temperance or addictions, evangelism, spiritual, build up the faith, salvation, relationships, and forgiveness. So if someone came up to me and said, I am having this health issue, I could go to this tab and put them right onto a sticky note in my Bible and be praying for them. And as I walk through this on a daily basis, I would be hitting different people's prayers. And so I created this guide for these three tabs. And so it goes right along with this. And it has a verse for each of the issues. But as we go through, you'll see those verses. So I'll show you how this works. So if I come to the first tab, this is finances and I added some blank sticky notes just so you can get an idea. And the reason I do sticky notes is so if prayers get answered, you can move them to another spot and it doesn't mess up the page since it is glued in. So this one is a verse about finances, Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy father as it is this day. So I like that. It says, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. So what you can do is just list people's names, like in a larger sticky note, you can take a smaller one. Maybe they are sharing a story about their situation and you want to remember that for your prayer life. Um, you could do a small one like this to list names, however you would like to do. And on it, there's a front and a back. So if you have a lot of people, like when you get to the salvation tab, there are so many people that will say, can you pray for my sister? Can you pray for my aunt? Can you pray for my best friend? And something I'm thinking about is creating a spot of how God answers prayers. And so if you notice with finances, Deuteronomy 8.18, I put it next to that spot in Deuteronomy 8.18. So it's part of the Bible. So one thing to consider as you're doing this is you can actually choose a color that is only for yourself. I know I have, same as many of you, this huge collection of sticky notes. And my personal favorite color is yellow. So that's a color that I can write for myself. And on one of these larger tabs, I can really pour out my heart. Maybe God's dealing with me on a subject and I can just pour out my prayer to fully commit myself to him. You can use all kinds of different sizes and that can be your color. And then other people, maybe family is blue, church members are purple, or, you know, it can just be random colors, but maybe your color is one specific color. The other thing to mention as you go about your day and you find out people's prayer concerns, I don't bring this with me. 
because of the tab. I don't want them to get all bent up. It kind of just goes in a special spot. So what I do is I have these books and it's got note paper for this book here. So I always have these at church and I can rip out a sheet. And so if someone comes up and they have a prayer request or if they announce a prayer request at church, I can write it down on my note sheet and then transfer it into a sticky note at a later time. The other thing you can do is usually we have our phone with us and you can message yourself a text message of a prayer request or maybe when you're thinking of for yourself, whatever it might be, and then add that to your Bible later. So in this, the thing that I think is so essential is to be completely honest with yourself. This is about getting into your prayer closet and pouring your heart out to God. Now, I personally am not a journaler. I don't keep a diary. I tried to when I was in high school, but I tend to like to just pray to God. So for me, these are just more of action steps. The thing to remember, though, is that with anything that we're struggling with, that we aren't able to do any of it. Remember that all of our righteousness is filthy rags. God over and over again in his word says that he's going to do it in us. He's going to put his word into our heart. So really it's about letting go and trusting God and giving these things to God. But we do need to remember that we are in a battle. God is going to fight this battle for us. He will do all of it, but we need to constantly be surrendering. So then I moved down one and I did a yellow tab for this next one. And this one is on family. And if I'd planned this out, I would have printed this out with yellow ink and had it all match. But if this paper ever starts to come unglued, I can always change it over to the yellow ink. But it's fine for now. It's fine that it doesn't match. So this one for family, I did Joshua 24 verse 18. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods, the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that's Joshua 24, 15, which is right here. And so then the next tab that we come to, and it just happens to match the green, it wasn't planned, is miscellaneous desires and need. And so if something doesn't fit in a category, I can put it here. And this is Psalm 37, verse 4. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And of course, this doesn't mean a Porsche. When we're delighting ourselves in the Lord, usually the desires of our heart are gonna match what God would want for us. So this is just a miscellaneous page. So then I come back to this next one and it's work in school. So if someone has an issue with their work, maybe they're struggling, maybe they don't know if they're gonna get laid off or someone's at school and they're really struggling with a subject, you can add them to this part. So it's Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. So this is actually, the verse 10 is on this side of the page, but I wanted it all facing out. So it's not quite with the verse, but close enough. So then I come to the next one, which is this lighter blue color. And this one is related to direction. Isaiah 30 verse 21. And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. You know, so I know it looks odd because there's this plain piece of paper, but that goes to another part that I'll be showing in another video. But this verse here, Isaiah 30 verse 21 is over here. So it's close. And then just a little bit further, we have home. And so there's one that says home and there's one that says family. And I just know a lot of people at this time, myself included, we're trying to figure out where are we gonna live? Um, how are we gonna make it through this time with all of this upheaval? So this is an important category and it's separate from family. And it's Isaiah 32, 18. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. And then the next one is for protection. And this one is for anybody who says that they're in a state of fear of any kind. This is a good category for them. Deuteronomy 31, 16. Be strong and of good courage, Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And then also Hebrews 13, 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And then Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord 
and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So this one I put with Isaiah 54, 17, and it might have been there was something already in those spots, but I think it was actually because I really like this. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So the next prayer sheet is about people coming back to the faith. Maybe you have a friend that's wandered from the faith, and so you can add them and be praying for them. This one is Jeremiah 24, verse 7. And I will give them in a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And then health, Malachi 4, 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Where this one goes is not here, but that spot in my Bible was very packed with pages, so I just stuck it here so it's not exactly lining up but it still works. Here is one about unspoken prayers. You know, you can feel overwhelmed with feelings and not even know why. And so you could put yourself on here. Someone could come to you and say, could you pray for me for this issue? Can't tell you what's happening, but just pray for me and you can add them to the spot. So I put this with Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And so then we have temperance and addictions, and this is 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And then chapter 6, verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And then 2 Corinthians 6.16, which is where we are. And it says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. What a beautiful promise. And I think all of us struggle with addictions of some kind. And it might not be for drugs and alcohol. It might be a TV show that you know you shouldn't be watching, movies that you know are not a good influence on your life. And so, like even for myself, I want to be thinking about myself being the temple of God and he doesn't want to be watching certain things and he doesn't want to be consuming certain things. So I like this spot a lot. This one is about evangelism. And all of us are called to be evangelists in some ways. So probably almost all of us want to add our names on this sheet. At least I do. So this is Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And this one is spiritual building up our faith. So we haven't left the faith. We just want to strengthen our faith. And I connected this to Colossians 1 verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This one is connected to salvation. So this one tends to get very filled up. There are so many of us that know people that aren't part of the faith that we wanna have come in. So you'll have your own prayer list and you'll have other people's. So this is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse three. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So this verse, I don't know how Calvinists can read this verse and understand it any way than what it says. He came that all would be saved and not all choose to be saved. It's our choice, but to say that Christ only died for some, I don't read that here. 
So this category is about relationships and forgiveness. And so often we can be bearing a grudge or, you know, things have hurt us in the past. And so we want to keep giving this to God. And so this is a good reminder. And I think a lot of us struggle with this. So Ephesians 4, 2, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. And then 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. So now comes the part that really I just love. And again, you can do this with a binder where you've written out prayer requests in a separate notebook and then just have a Bible next to you. So you don't have to do it this way. I just personally like doing it this way. So once you've written somebody's request, say someone has poured their heart out to you and they're really struggling with fear. So you've written their need down. And then as you're going through the prayer, this is where the tabs at the top come into play. So one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. And when I think about that, true peace is when we've given everything to God and we have that full trust in God and that everything that happens to us is in His hands. And even if bad things happen, it could be that it's just part of this great controversy with Satan and God is wanting to strengthen our character and make us trust God more. Or it could be that it's a consequence of an action that we've taken. But either way, everything that happens to us is for our good. So to me, anytime we have fear, it's because we aren't resting fully in Jesus. And so I have a tab that is related to peace. And so as you're praying for this friend, you can pray actual verses over their life using these yellow tabs that are at the top. This next part of the video, I'm going to go through these tabs at the top. Now, this has been included in other videos, so this might be the end of the watching for you. But if you haven't seen these, I'll go ahead and show you them now. So what I have on here are different tabs that represent different things. These ones are different than the ones that I have in my study Bible, where I have tabs about like God and Antichrist and Mark of the Beast, Seal of God, State of the Dead, those kind of tabs. These ones are different. These tabs just here are related to these programs, the Virtue Training Bible and the Child Training Bible. And what they have done is they've taken all these different categories and they've given verses on it. For example, in the Child Training Bible on different issues that kids have, but then adults also have them. And so that's the Child Training Bible. And then here are the Virtue Training Bible scriptures. So you go through and mark the scriptures in your Bible. They designed it though so that the tabs would go all around your Bible. And this Bible is actually smaller than what they recommend because you want it to have plenty of room for all of them. But what I found while I was setting this up for my kids is that I really liked it for me. I remember when I was putting in the tabs for joy and I don't remember that I was feeling necessarily down. But when I finished marking up those tabs, when I'd gotten through all of them, I actually noticed a difference in my emotion and I actually felt joy. So what I ended up doing is taking all of the categories from these items and just marking them out here. And then what I'm working on is going through all the different verses and then just deciding for sure, do I want it to go in one of these categories? And these categories are actually based on Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23. And that's the verse that says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such things there is no law. So what I did is I put that at the top, love, joy, peace, long suffering or patience, gentleness kindness and meekness is all in one category goodness and faith and then categories that they had separated out like god the gospel jesus those kind of things i just have moved them into faith and then when i look at the verses for anger that might go in a category like love or peace or patience so just to show you how this works if i look at peace i put in a lot of different categories and so what you would do is go to the first verse. So just to give you an example of how this works, I have the yellow tab that I put in up here, and then I highlight whatever the verse is. They recommend a certain marker pen, but I found it showed through to the other page, and then I was confused as I was looking at it, what it went with. So I'm using Crayola Twistables to do this. And it was this whole section actually then I put in, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. 
So here's one verse connected with peace. So when I come to this page with yellow, I look for the yellow and it says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And then on this page, there's a bunch of them that are in yellow and some are about anger. And then like, here's one about contentment. And so as I'm going through it, I just read anything that's highlighted in yellow and I'm in that category. And so that's how that part of it works. So I do also want to mention that you don't have to pay to be able to add verses to your Bible. You can actually put into your search engine, what does the Bible say about anger or complaining or defiance, any of those categories, love, joy, peace, and get all the verses and then just start marking them up. And then in your Bible studies, anytime you come across verses that remind you of these categories, you can just add it to it. I liked these just because it was already done for me. And also I've noticed as I've been doing it, they came up with some verses that I wouldn't have thought of. So that's been nice, but you definitely don't have to pay for something like this. So that's the tabs that I have at the top of the Bible and I haven't come anywhere near finishing it. I haven't even come close to that. It was interesting though, the other day, just on a whim, I decided to read the verses on peace and it was amazing to me how much it affected my mood and how I was feeling. And so I really think it's sad that I don't use this more often than I do for any time I'm feeling an emotion, just grab this and then look at the verses that can help me out. And then of course, this also connects with as I'm praying with other people, as I write down their prayer needs here, you know that they need peace. So you can read some of that scripture over them or they need more love or whatever they're struggling with. So I like having this all together. So it feels very connected, like a real war room. So in future videos, I'll go through the rest of these tabs so you can decide if this is something that interests you.